When it comes to video game prototypes, most collectors think of Nintendo's attempt at collaboration with Sony, the Super NES CD-ROM, or the Nintendo PlayStation, as it has become so affectionately known. But what if I told you Nintendo once tried to make a console, not with another Japanese electronics company, but an American automotive manufacturer? I'm talking, of course, about the 1990 Oldsmobile Expression. But let's not get too ahead of ourselves. We need a bit of history. Going back as far as its first foray into the home console market, Nintendo has always tried to distance itself from the crowd, especially in the United States. After the video game crash of whenever, Nintendo decided it would do things a bit differently stateside. Instead of the small, colorful, toy-like video game consoles of old, Nintendo wanted a more utilitarian, almost appliance-like aesthetic to their console, with it designed to mimic the look and feel of some VCRs of the time. Even the games were made to look like video cassettes. After all, it wasn't a family computer, it was an entertainment system. They released accessories like Rob the Robot to make the console feel more immersive and have a broader appeal, but ultimately, their main market was stuck in the under 12 and socially awkward demographic. So, after conquering that market, the big N decided it was time to branch out. In 1989, Nintendo partnered with Sharp to produce a television with a built-in NES, which they marketed to hotels, because adult pay-per-view probably wasn't around for everyone quite yet. Nintendo also developed its hands-free controller, so people could play the console and use adult pay-per-view at the same time, or something. So with the over 12 but just learning to get a handle on things demographic covered, what about the more mature, more artistic consumer? Nintendo thought about making a program that let you knit and sew using the NES, but decided to scrap it. Oh wait! No they didn't! They just saved it for the Game Boy Color, which already doubled as a camera, printer, radio, and even a personal computer. In the early 2000s, Nintendo continued its work of putting its product where it doesn't belong by teaming up with Visteon to design a portable DVD player that doubled as a Game Boy Advance, the perfect combination for road trips. It had a wireless controller and was meant to silence your children in the back seat much more safely and legally than a lake drowning would. So after you've conceded that yes, Nintendo does in fact make some goofy marketing decisions, and has made some really dumb consoles in the past, it's easy to understand why they might think that Mario on the motorway is a marvelous masterpiece. But what about the automotive industry? What would compel a car company to make something so ridiculous as the Oldsmobile Expression? Just like Joseph Mengele, Oldsmobile's parent company General Motors was no stranger to experimentation. Some models of the 7th generation Buick Riviera contained a CRT touchscreen in the dashboard. It controlled the radio, adjusted the HVAC, and even displayed primitive readouts of some of the engine functions. It was, in fact, not at all dissimilar to modern infotainment systems. Just more hipster friendly. Even video game developers were getting into the business of making weird tech for cars in the late 1980s. In 1985, Nolan Bushnell, founder of Atari and, more importantly, creator of Chuck E. Cheese, helped startup company ETAC make an early navigation system for the automotive market. It all started when Pong creator Bushnell couldn't pay his indentured servants enough to properly navigate his racing yacht through the Pacific, so he decided it was time to work out a system that could do it for him. Since more people owned cars than yachts in the 1980s, Bushnell found it more advantageous to market his creation toward roadgoers. Unfortunately for ETAC, their product was a flop, and no American manufacturer saw fit to put a navigation system into one of their cars from factory until 1995, when GM introduced GuideStar. But five years earlier, before General Motors was putting SatNav into their Oldsmobile's dashboards, they were cramming Nintendo Entertainment Systems into their hatches. Introduced at the Chicago Auto Show in 1990, the expression was a four-door wagon with side-swinging rear hatch. Seating six people comfortably and with enough power to haul them all, it was the perfect road trip vehicle. But what made this car special was housed in the rear hatch door a modified Nintendo Entertainment System with two controllers and a built-in display. Also included was a VCR for personal pleasure, a CD player for body audio books, and a vacuum cleaner to practice third base. This plethora of features was meant to provide an enjoyable, easy, and entertaining travel experience for the whole family. Sounds like the perfect car to drive to conventions, right? Well, it would be if GM ever made more than one. You see, this was a prototype car, a proof of concept meant to be used as a yardstick by which every other Detroit dragster developer must measure himself to prove he really is one of the big three. 
Because it was a concept, there was only one made, but unlike the Nintendo PlayStation, no one even knows where the prototype is, or if it still exists at all. I checked through Craigslist a couple times, but that yielded no results. So, what do you do, as a lover of both video game collecting and automotive culture, who wants to experience this fascinating blending of worlds in person? Nothing. You don't get to see the Holy Grail, and you never will. The sooner you realize that, the sooner you can start focusing on the tangibility of life, and stop wasting all your days like Henry Jones Sr.